<clears throat> All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, <laughs> for coming to the meeting tonight. Um, is there any agenda additions or deletions? All right, hearing none. I ask for a motion with re excuse me, regard to the January 23rd. I'll make a motion, accept them as presented with I'll corrections second. if needed. All right, you're second it. I'll second. Yes, see any. Bob, any corrections? I uh, I'm going to abstain. I was not here. Okay, I'm good with it. All right, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Wait a minute, I wasn't here either. That's oh. okay. I can't second the motion. So that motion has to sit. All right, then if that's the case, then I'll make the motion that we accept the regular January 23rd minutes. You don't have a, you don't have a quorum. Well, you don't have enough. You, you only have got two guys that can vote on it, so you don't on. have a quorum. So you wait for Robert or girls table at the next meeting. Um, I resend my motion. It doesn't, now, I would argue the point that um, if you read the meetings, I mean the minutes, you could vote on them. Not How can I? No, I can't. Yeah, you can. I bet you. No, because he actually didn't know what was actually said. Yeah, I don't know if they're accurate. I have no idea whether they're accurate because I wasn't here. Well, Robert's not going to. I, Robert's coming I rescind my motion and we'll table it until we have. Okay, but. Yeah. Yeah. Katie, I want you to check on that, all right? Sure. With the state. Because I, I I remember a couple of times when Jim Doherty was here, we danced that dance. Um, okay, moving right along. Highway, road commissioner's report. What do you got for us? Um, the, and K Katie can enlighten on this, the, the town highway bridge and weight restriction filing that every year we talk about posting the roads and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, we've also agreed to not do it. Mm -hmm. um, the reason be, just for the record of it, one of the main reasons is you'll have companies that are exempt from it, like average truck, fuel trucks, to our biggest heavy traveled roads are uh, the maple sugars operations with heavy trucks. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that would be that I can see is, and there's probably a few more, is the main thing is log trucks. And actually there's been, um, I've been in contact with a few log companies that are the loggers that haul with the trucks about traveling our dirt roads and actually coordinate with them the best time with an agreement that they can travel the roads without breaking them up. So. When we, in the past, um, I think Bob, you can attest to this, when we used to get overweight permits and things like this, uh, we were having, that's when we had constables and then- right. The enforcement issues. Yeah, and that's, was the biggest problem and the permits I think at the time were only like ten dollars so it wasn't worth the effort of hiring somebody to go mm -hmm. out for enforcement then we would have to according to what uh, some of the discussion was have to have a machine that you could weigh the that, can I ask a quest question here scales or something. are we talking overweight permits or spring posting permits Spring posting. Yeah, yeah okay. Right. But this is this was all part of the whole big conversation when we decided we didn't even want to post it. I think yeah. Norm was. Yeah, I think uh, Norm was. Yeah. Uh, he was saying it's not worth it. Right. So, okay. The select board. That's all I have, unless somebody got questions about it. Um. The um, Kingsley Bridge traffic rerouting plan. Um, we've received a template, like a blueprint. Yes. From no, it's in your packet. Uh, I emailed it off to you guys. 
Okay, yes, you did. From the engineer of signage. Um, I believe there's 11 signs that we have to put up. This one you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. There's a, yeah. part way through there, there's a color picture. Yep, I saw it. With all the signs. And I'm actually going to work with VTrans because I don't see no sense of us buying all the signs and not hardly ever use them. Because mm -hmm. those will be very expensive. Well, I, it, um, it's going to take us quite a while, the row crew, to, to put them up. I was reading through this. Yeah, it's the I did not understand that that's the town's responsibility mm -hmm. to put those signs up. Yeah. If the contractor is closing the road, that's in the in the contract that we. Uh, this is the detour, rerouting traffic and stuff like that. Then we'll have a bridge close sign at the bridge, both sides. So that what it'll basically be is. At the top of Bump Road, headed north, we'll put a sign there. Uh, limited uh, local traffic only. Sorry, Bob. It's all small Bob. Bob. Yeah, so it looks like you know, and I got a, I think uh, about seven questions that I need to tell <laughs> the fellow's name. To stay <coughs> JD, um, questions about understanding feel the things that are in there. I'll be in contact with him on that part. It would be nice if you could borrow the signs. Yeah, because you... Because these are, they got to be a, a permanent sign because they're going to be up for like a year, roughly. Yeah. You take. So you're talking at least 10 signs. There's 11 of them. Is there? And most of them, they're a board sign. They're like a plywood Mm -hmm. Board. They're not. They can't have the vinyl or anything like that. It's flimsy. And we got to put them in. We got to order. If we got poles, um, I believe we got enough poles, but we need to buy some more poles for the inserts because we got to go to the state specs that they. Can, I have to look at it again. I think it's like they can't be a four inches above the ground. The first insert, and then you drop the the tall one in. Hold the sign. <clears throat> so well, that's a responsibility of the town. I, I mm -hmm. but apparently it was because when they did the Chippenhook Bridge, and maybe I'm wrong because I had nothing to do with it, but we got a field detour signs down the garage and La Victory's car lot and stuff like that, regrouping yeah. them apparently on Cordline Road, maybe, and down the road, schoolhouse, Cordline. They're around that way. No, they didn't yeah. go that didn't, way. Didn't we have to uh, put the signs up? I'm not sure who bought them. But the road crew, I believe, when the bridge is done at uh, Chippen Hall, or at Clarendon Springs, with the quarter line road and so on, I believe that our crew put them up. Yeah. I don't know who bought them. But you're saying that there's some of these signs down back? Ah, uh, very few. I got to look over the transfer station because up overhead there's a bunch of signs up there and I haven't been up there. Okay. I gotta check to see what we got for inventory and oh, then yeah. from there I'm gonna get hold of uh, JP and and then speak with see if I can get permission to be trans to borrow some that time frame. Those signs aren't cheap. No. <laughs> and I can't see us buying them and letting them set them. They'll be antique and then they'll be not legal ten years from now. Yeah, yeah, they'll change the specs. Change something different, different color and wording or yeah. age and population or whatever. <laughs> um Katie, did you have anything to add to that? No, I think it's just you know informational giving you guys an update. Okay. Um the other thing was the Walker Mountain Paven discussion. Um just to give heads up we're, <coughs> we're ready to go with a grant application. To do paving on Walker Mountain Road from Clarendon Springs Bridge Excuse me. to 133. Um, that was measured out last week, last Friday, so we can get figures and get an estimate of for our grant figure to do it. Did anybody say anything about that bridge? Um, haven't heard nothing. 
because I was up there today uh, was looking at that. It, that thing's in bad shape. Yes, it is. Um, when he was here, the paving company, um, Tom Fuller, were measuring that out last Friday there. I also had him measure out Creek Road just south of the box culvert project we got going. There's a break right there of give us a price of what it, an estimate of what it'd be to pay from that break on the south side of the box culvert all the way down Freeze Road because that road's starting to go to pop on us. Just for budgeting numbers and yeah, okay. if we have the revenue to do it, we'll do it this summer. Um, Tier Road. The other thing was the, the Tier Road survey update. We finally, Katie, we have light on this here. We I can't have reached out to probably five or six surveyors and haven't had luck with them having an open schedule. So we've landed on, um, I think his name is Robert Farnsworth. Yes. And he said he could pencil us in for the end of June and, um, Get us a proposal, so we're hoping to go that direction. If that sounds good with uh, you guys, all right. Just, but just keep moving along with it. Yeah, I mean, we we're we're trying to gather multiple estimates, but it's not sounding like we're gonna be able to get multiple. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we keep working on it. Um, the other thing, the next thing we have is um, the Horton Road zoning inquiry. Is that something you want to speak to, Kevin? Or? Yeah, I had an inquiry from somebody who's interested in buying one of the parcels on that road. And apparently she had the um, impression that there was a right-of-way up there, but she couldn't find it, and she asked me about it. And it's a, a Class 4 road. Uh, that hasn't been maintained for many a year. <coughs> and the impression I got from the correspondence that uh, you forwarded on to me um, was pretty much up to us as far as whether we just say we don't maintain it or, or whatever. So her request, her question. Her was, question was, she wants to buy the land up in there, and she was inquiring about right of ways and so forth. I mean, it's it's technically a town road, so it's really not a right of way. Um, she wanted to know if she could do improvements to the road. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah, we and haven't allowed anybody to do even, that. Um, was that a gentleman from the village and towns that you wrote to? Um, that was B Trans. Excuse me? B Trans. B Trans, okay. I wasn't really clear on, um, from his letter whether we could, could allow that. Um, from what Cash was saying, it's See, when not they had a good when country. They, when they had private, private roads, um, the town take them over after they were brought up to a town spec to a class three level like uh, yeah uh, and and once they did that and we had the road commission go over and, and inspected it mm -hmm. then we would uh, approve it and then we'd maintain it after that but this class the Horton Road um, you know it's we've had class four road yes yeah. So it's a town road. From what I gather from looking at history and historical stuff, it was originally a trail and then a carriage road, and eventually the town took over, took it over for a period of time. It was, uh, and then there was nobody else during, during the nobody revolutionary living up there anymore, so it was just allowed to go during the Revolutionary War. So that. that with the history. So we need to decide. Uh, her question was, 
is she able she her her okay I'll flop ahead here also for the camp that she wanted to be off grid and build a camp up there she wanted to know about having a driveway access off that road and as far as I'm concerned I have no problem with that if we do enough setback in case that ever, if the Hort Road ever develops it'll be set back yeah. so it wouldn't be in right away I have no personally I don't unless you want to steer me different I have no problem ex looking at the site if it can approve a driveway access to where she wants to put the camp but and yet and then the question to follow that up is she allowed to maintain that road of the Horton Road itself because it's a town owned because it's town owned town home we're on we're talking on the west side right up on, yeah, up up on top yeah, it's up where on they top. just logged it up in there i don't okay. know if that parcel got logged i actually i wanted to walk i talked to art about or i was hoping to have time to, before this meeting to actually walk out there do a site visit just to see the surroundings of what so it doesn't it. abut quarter line no she is second property it's down. a second property in it looks yeah. like it's maybe between a quarter and a half a mile in from uh, quarter line road and there were where Ralph Austin had the camp down that's way down that's I was gonna say that's a lot when I used to ride the, mail, right? I used to ride horses going down there but you the to get to that camp you come in the bottom you right? have to because yeah. it's all washed out with the road, right? up it's, top yeah. it's not the boulders and the jeeps that are going on other properties to get around that that aren't supposed to be up there anyway if you allow somebody to maintain the road to do something in the road now you're open to the, what kind of quality of material they're going to use are they going to do it right i think i think it's a that's a big can of worms you're opening for that unless we specify the fact that that is a class four town road and with no intention of the town to upgrading that so if she wants to because other vehicles have been in and out of there if she wants to take the chance of riding down a class four road that the town does not maintain i don't have a problem with her putting a camp in there i couldn't yeah. care less i mean but to have i mean we we, we frown on somebody dropping a plow plowing a road mm -hmm. if it's a town road because of liability issues so are we going to allow somebody to drop stone or maybe do something to make it passable and part of that did happen with the loggers in there, unknown to me. Oh, they, so they, they could get the trucks in yeah, and out? They, apparently they had to beef it up a little bit to get the trucks in and out of there, the log trucks. I believe they had to because there was no log yard closer to the quarter line, so they had to load them out somewhere. So I'm thinking that the log trucks went down in there somewhere, and I'd, it'd be good if we did a site visit first before we... So my, my thing is, as far as who takes care of what, or if we do anything, or if yes or no, whatever, is my thought is to get back to her and say, we'll look at it for a driveway entrance as the step first step. And You're talking about the driveway entrance off of Horton so that she has access to, at least to the property. property. Which I, if they ever logged it, I don't know if there's any timber on it or what. The Tell her she's got to wait for the new grader, and Joel's going to go up there and grade that road for her. <laughs> Ain't going in there. <laughs> How many, so you think it's about a quarter mile off a of quarter line then? Yeah. And she According wanted to, to go. Yeah, looking at the real estate listing, that's what it looked like about. Yeah. She wanted to go to the furthest pen down. Okay. Her most easterly but you're still above the big washout oh definitely yeah. oh yeah oh yeah and I, I mean we get up there you might do a site visit and in this camp I, I think she's going to <coughs> use that warm season yeah so it wouldn't be a big deal anyway and yeah right it's hard to you uh, know if we're going to do anything up there 
these properties don't generate any tax revenue for the town. There's no houses. There's nothing there. It's raw land. I, I know the property that she's looking at generates two hundred dollars to the town, and uh, and three quarters of that goes to the school. No. So we get fifty bucks. But talking about some of the most developable real estate in Clarendon, as far as houses go, someday yeah. is that strip. Um, yep. Fifteen years from now, that's uh, look at Coraline Road. Exactly. What happened up there in the last twenty years? I mean, that's that's what I see. Eventually, you're eventually going to be in a situation where right that to, all across that mountain, where that's going to be. You already see it on the Rockland Town side by buildings sure. and all them up through there. Yeah, sure. Well, if we explain <coughs> to her that that's a class four road, we'll consider it uh, uh, because everybody at Hunters use it and everything else. You can utilize it, uh, but where you put your driveway. That would that's a our concern to make sure that um, you understand that if that road is ever upgraded or improved, that uh, your driveway has to be on the outer limit. Mm -hmm. If a culvert's needed, yeah. and I have no idea because I haven't done a site visit, mm -hmm. and it might be flat enough there where the water drains away and don't require a culvert, yeah. and they bang in some material. And I don't know. Imagine making her put a culvert in there. <laughs> I, don't I, know. Know what, I don't know if that tips down, if there's a slope there or not. I know. I'm just saying. That's, that's I think it's all flat. It's above the high I line. It's all damp. Above the but, but again, line. my thought process is this is a conversation we're going to be having about that road more and more as the years go and by. Definitely. Yep. I mean, it's just, it, it is what it, it is. hasn't come up before now. Yep. I wouldn't mind it being, I mean, it would make me going into Rutland a lot easier. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But, I mean, I that's see. that's the reality of what's coming mm -hmm. yeah. down the pike. But for the time being, we the town is not interested in upgrading it to a Class 3 road. No. If, if even, and based a, on, even a Class 4. And based what Brian Sanderson said, we're under no obligation to do that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the budget alone to, to upgrade that would scare you. <laughs> I mean, huge. Be the town yeah. budget. You're talking town. a couple you're years. You're talking big bucks. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. The other think, other people in the town are using that road for hunting and everything else like that. A lot of times, uh, Ralph Austin used to drive down there with the truck he had, uh, and Bert used to go down that way too. The High Line crew from Velco, a couple times we used that road, um, Must but we had a track break. Years ago then, because they, that's been washed out for years down there. Was yeah. there a culvert once upon a time, like way, way back? Or I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. We yeah, if, we, yeah. if we do any improvement at all on there, if she does any improvement at all, there's going to be a lot more people using that road. Yeah. That's yeah. the other piece. They'll be on it. That's the other piece. And as that's where the visitor nurse GPS center down there, actually two different times, two different nurses. Yeah, I've had two. Way down in there and broke her ankle and they logged her, logged her out with, with a tow truck. I've had two relatives that come up to visit me that the GPS has steered them up. From the bottom. From the bottom yeah. up Horton. Oh, yeah, we'll do Really? That. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know get up so far, and then there's that real deep. Now ditch. that we you brought that up, my thought too, I've forgotten all about it. Is should we actually buy get a sign on Creek Road, up in there a little bit that G E or yeah. GPS coordinates? Like done. I'll follow the GPS. Basically. Yeah. Turn around. yeah. Well, they they were, both of them were smart enough that they <laughs> right they looked at it and said, I don't think so. <laughs> we probably should have that. It should probably be posted on both ends. Mm-hmm. Class four road, not a through road, not a, yeah, not, not maintained, not, a, not, not maintained, not a not a through road. Well, Walton Town does that on Walk Mountain Road, on uh, Cordelheim Road. Yeah, yeah, that's supposed to not maintained. Cordelheim, they're, they're still on the Walton Town side. Yep, I don't know unless they've taken it down. They they'll maintain it somewhat. Yeah, yep. 
But I mean that we probably should do that. That's mm-hmm. prob that's probably yeah. I mean a yeah, logical right. thing. Class four road, not maintained. Yeah. Um I think at your own risk. You could yeah, yeah, you could even put wash out wash out ahead or something like that so people know yeah. you're not getting through this thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, just just post it's not a true road. So yeah. that we that's the best thing. We just kinda yeah. kinda got off kilter here. So her and re- to reply back to her, I think we had a couple of scope there for a site visit. Mm-hmm. Just see what the surrounding area is and go from there. The other piece that I'd like to do, find out, is, and I don't know about if this is still true, like in Shrewsbury, Upper Cold River Road never was maintained all the way through. I don't know if it still is. From the cover bridge up. From the cover bridge was never maintained, but yet there's a few houses in there. But right. now it is. So, what, yeah. so are they maintaining it now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but when it wasn't, I'm wondering what Shrewsbury did. In I mean, there's still places in Shrewsbury that weren't maintained. Was it just they used at to your close, own, they at used your to own close risk? it in the winter because there's a power line that goes through there, and when we used to have to go up there uh, in the winter time, mm-hmm. you had to put snowshoes on and go down to where the pole. pole yeah, was. but what I'm saying is there. <coughs> I mean, did it as soon as there was a house there, they started maintaining, or did it go... Because it, it seems to me like there was some houses in there for a I while. Know, I don't know what class road that is, either. I don't know what it... If they're maintaining it now, obviously... It's got to be a class 3. It's got to be a class 3 now. Well, get back to the point here. I think that we should let her know that uh, the town has no intention to upgrade that road at this point. Mm-hmm. And that um, if she thinks she wants to go use that trail uh, and then put a driveway to a camp, you got to go down and give her permit to build a camp anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. she hasn't. She actually hasn't bought the property yet. I was going to say the uh, she's property investigating it. it. Yeah, um, she's semi-local. She said she was a, I think, the current clerk in Chittenden. Yeah. Um, and her question about the upgrades, she would not be able to upgrade the town road because of liability issues. Is that what you guys decided? I wonder if she could, if she signed off on a, on a liability issue. In other words, if she took it upon herself to just, there's a couple muddy spots in there. Well, any, any, up, wouldn't you just put in there, any upgrades would have to be approved by the road commissioner? Sounds good. I, I mean, if that would make the most sense to me, if she wants to put a couple loads of gravel in or something, it's going to well, be... So you want to designate that as any landowner who wants to upgrade it? Well, I'm just thinking back to, like, we had private roads that we ran into, thinking up off of East Street and yeah. places like that, that landowners... I, but that was technically before they were taken over as town road. They were still private at that point, weren't they? I mean, like Beacon and. I'm just thinking before we took them over, the landowners did some stuff. I'm yeah. not sure. I wasn't on board yet. Yeah. Col- well, Collins Lane, I believe, is still done that way right now, isn't it? I don't know. That's not a town road. No, we don't maintain that at all. But the the what's the one that goes in a circle? It's oh, the backside is. All private road. It's ne- it was never upgraded. Is that there's uh, I believe Beacon Heights up there by the store. The you know, that's barn. And then uh, Brenda Lane over Brenda Lane. Is what I'm thinking of. And remember, you guys would just go down and then they try to turn around in a driveway or something. That's impossible. So the only thing you did was plow the other side, <coughs> but. We semi maintain it just yeah. to get in the and loop, out. Yeah. just to get in and out. Yeah, just for the town safety, and it's actually better for everything all the way around. We don't even hardly ever grade that road that section unless it's real bad. We well, haven't added material to it either. Our, the town policy always was if there was a private road, and they wanted to take the town take it over, then they had to get it up to town specs on their dime before and that's right. what what happened so so young right. so is that something we want to 
go with to her with is if she wants to upgrade and needs approval of uh, have an idea of what the project is going to consist of. And the other thing is, once she upgrades it, like you said, it's going to be more traffic on that road. That section. And that's where I put a stop sign and a do not enter sign down in there. So it's not just her being, if something happens to what she's doing, if somebody else, now that it's been semi improved and you got other a bunch of other people going on it, there's liability issues there. That's where we need our signs that's not maintained. Yeah. 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 I think that would cover us. Yeah. The sign would have to be right there at the portal line road at the intersection. No, just then 50 feet or something. Which? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we that's just that's talked about three or four different things. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, about her um, taking that letting her have a um, driveway entrance onto a class four road yeah i mean i don't see any issues we can issue a, a driveway permit that's not a problem I mean, no. I mean what she would need to do because we can't we, we're putting the cart before the horse she's got to buy it first mm -hmm. i mean we can go on record tonight and state that we can issue a driveway permit that's mm -hmm. not a problem that sounds um and it would still be subject, like you said. I know it seems awkward, but it's still subject to yeah, if there's water runoff. You know, we yeah. like if she needs a, you're gonna have to tell her to put a culvert out in Timbuktu. I mean, but it's still, it's still, you know, you still gotta follow the rules because the theory is someday that may not no. be a class four road anymore. No, but at this point, the town is is going to consider that a class 4 road mm -hmm. non-maintained however if you're willing to get access to your property mm -hmm. we can't uh, we can't even make that motion because she doesn't own she it. doesn't own yeah. it yet. but what i was going to say is what we may want to consider we're talking about policies we may want to consider setting a policy about class 4 roads and do our homework before we do it but if you know where because very good questions have been asked where does our liability lie if somebody puts a camp in there and they want to put you know to your point there's a wet hole and they want to go get a load of three quarter inch gravel and fill in the wet hole who's liable then is it you know or it can we set a policy that any class four road whatever you want to call it improvements any class four road concerns you don't have to be dealt with the road commissioner and what, what do you say cost sharing may be involved because i mean we again we don't have any interest in upgrading that road based on what vtrans told us we have no obligation to upgrade that road there's nothing that says by law that we have to do anything up there especially during the winter but at the same time with the understanding to your point about tax revenue well what about if, if there's going to be you know built up houses and building lots going in along that road and we're going to at that point we are going to generate tax revenue right i mean it's going to go it's going to go the other way then you're going to have a different situation that we're going to be talking about well what about if we uh the town does the improvements and charge her i mean she's going to pay a contractor or somebody else to do it that way, we're we know for a fact that it, what gravel we're putting in there, we know exactly what we're doing. If she wants an improvement on the road, then the town can give her a cost of what it's going to be. If she's willing to pay a contractor, then you know why not why not us get paid? It depends on the person, and I don't know this person, but I'm thinking that it's going to be a camp. I need to get my truck pickup from this point to point B, and if I need a, a pickup load of gravel, I'm gonna put it in there just to smooth the edges up, just so I can drive through. Yeah, uh, my gut is that again, being wanting to be off grid, wanting to mm -hmm. be all those yeah. types of things, that's what makes the most sense to me. They're not looking for it to be a highway. No, yeah. they don't want it to be a highway because then everybody and their brother would be down there. That's right. There'd be issues with the camp. 
I mean, I someday have to just take the Jeep and take a ride, because I've, I've never ridden that road at all. So I, I've never... You know, I know that, but... You'll have fun. You'll have fun. More fun no, on a horseback, though. My... That's my, how I used to go down there. Yeah. My course. nephew thought he was going down there one time with a pickup truck, a little S10 Chevy. Didn't go very far? I, I told him, I said, before you even go down there, you stop at the end of the road and walk down there first. Yeah. He did. He walked down. He didn't drive down there. Yeah. So. Yeah, that thing's been washed out, what, 30 years? Probably. Or more. Oh. Baker can tell you more. All my that. life, for sure. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time, 30-plus years. Yeah, because got way back in the 70s, we were riding we snowmobiles. Snowmobiles through there. To get around it, you had to go up yeah. through the woods. To get around the, the washout then? Yeah. So it's been washed out since the 70s then? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mid to late 70s anyway. Late, okay. but it got really I'd bad. say mid, late 70s. Right, but it, it really got bad about 1983-ish around there uh, because somebody tried to, dig, I don't know who did it, but they had a tractor up there with a front end loader on it, and they tried to dig where that swale is, almost down towards Coeur I mean, towards Creek Road. And that's in whoever dug that ditch, then had to, over the years, it's really gotten worse because hmm. there's a ditch down there. Well, I think we so beat. I think we beat this one to death. But yeah, I would my, my thing is, wh how do we want to respond to her? That she can. Yes, we will investigate a driveway culvert. Yeah. So what I would say is, yes, we would issue a permit. Mm -hmm. Subject to permit. I mean, permits can be issued. Um, any upgrade to the road is going to have to be discussed with the select board. But but at this time. The select board has no plans Intention. to do it, no intentions to do anything. That's, That's right. all I would say. It. Yeah. Keep Sounds it, good. keep it vague. That Sounds good. The right there. Has, right? Well, she still has to have a permit. Yeah. Even if it's off grid i mean so chitin and I, I think she's put in there they have no zoning so i think that's where that comes in it's still subject to zoning they still have to she still has to have a permit okay. yeah so i'll probably draft up something and send it to you and the board before i send it to her okay yeah. um and if she wants perfect or if you want Cass to go up and inspect that um i can meet you up there we can yeah. wait till she buys it I was yeah, going to say, if, wait if, and see if she buys it. Because yeah. it's, it's awful expensive. Okay. We what is this? Yeah, 50 probably. grand. Enough on that one. You all said eight. 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 Yeah. Um, an update on the box cover and Creek Road. We had a bid meeting, a site visit bid meeting last week. Uh, we had 19, or nine contractors showed up which is quite impressive. Um, for this one, I think it's from Barry. Well, most of them are local. <coughs> and their bid openings are coming up 26th or 22nd of, 22nd of August, or of February. So the following week. Our, our next meeting then? Yeah. yeah. No. no. Our next meeting is the 27th. The bid opening is just... On a Wednesday here with the contractors and him and then he's going to look them over give you a recommendation and you can look them over in your Monday meeting why are the bids not being opened with the select board I don't know that's what the notice said <laughs> I mean it's, you're welcome to comment it's a I guess I guess I missed that because they should have been opened here they're going to be open here they should be they should, well they, I sent an email if I should warn it as a select board meeting that date I guess I missed that communication. I, I, I sent out a couple emails about I did see whether that. it needs to be a select board meeting or a special meeting. Oh, yes, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah those, for the future, in my yeah. opinion, those should be just like paving. They should be here on camera in front of everybody at the at a select board meeting. Yeah. So these bid uh, <clears throat> bids are going to be open at 10 o'clock on the 22nd. So would you like me to warn that as a special meeting? Yeah. Okay. And how will that work with you mentioned about like back TV and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't be here the twenty second, so there's no way I can be here that day. 
but um, well, they're just going to be they're just opening them. They're not they're not awarding right. the bid. They're just right. They're just opening it. So there, and then any it, con- and then it comes to questions. us for us to to choose. Then, if that's the case, then let them open it and stuff, and then uh, at our next meeting following that, then you can present. We can have the layout of each one and yeah, yeah. so like yeah. a spreadsheet read, or something yeah. with everybody. Read yeah. all the small print or something, yeah. you know. Now this was because there's going to be difference. I mean, there's going to be engineer that decided this, right? The mm-hmm. guy who's the one we hired to do this, right? Do so he's going to be at the opening and yes. all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, he is yeah. like in charge of the opening, basically. He's in charge of the whole project. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Because we hired. We might him still want to warn it just in case a couple of select people want to show up. That's what Just I would like case. direction on. So I'm going to warn it as a special meeting. And then does there need to be an agenda with it? If it's a special meeting, there has to be. Yeah. Yep. And, and, but so somehow that's the 22nd, make it clear. Mm-hmm. Which is Tuesday? It's a Wednesday. 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 Yeah. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. yeah I'm Next the, Wednesday. I'm at the state house all day. I can't, I can't be here. I, I, I won't be able to, hmm? I, I won't be able to make that date. Day. I have an appointment at the hospital. That morning. Well, basically, we're just going to open up bids and stuff. Just to so it all comes down to if Art and Mike can go. Cause if, if only one of you can go, it doesn't need to be warned. Right. If all three of you are going to show up. I mean, no, we know Cash will be there. But it all comes down to if the two of you are going to I, I can't. There's no way. No. So let's warn it. That cover our bases. In case you guys come down. Plain, plain and simple. Yeah. And uh, no, there's no question. Right. But the final decision will be made until the next long twenty-seven meeting. Right. Yeah. That next that next Monday. Yeah. And that's when basically you'll have he'll have is he going to come to that and give us the the engineer sure coming to that I'm sure to I give us a recommend too, yeah. give us a recommendation. Yeah, I'm sure he can come. Okay. Nah, he can be on email or a conference call or something. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, Sorry, I guess that somehow I missed all of what... The there was, qu- like, I sent out quite a few emails with the different dates and asking about the special meeting versus not, but it is also warned in the invitation to bid right now that there's an opening. Okay. But I'll do a special meeting agenda as well. Okay. Uh, uh, the last thing I'm going to bring up right here is we're the addition on the back of the barn where the trucks are backed in. Um, the framework is up. It's coming along very well. Anybody wants to see it? Yeah. You're welcome to come down. Yeah. Looks like it looked good the other day. Pretty like nice posting beam. So is this gonna allow get in with the plows on? Yep. Good. And then also off season of plowing, we can actually turn the trucks around. We think we got enough room to drive the trucks in there, drop the plows. Oh good. Oh, and leave the plow. Okay. Leave the plow on the cover. The undercover. Cool. Good. And then huh, that frees up the yard a little bit. Yeah. And another thing that just popped up: the end of towards the rail tracks. There's if we have enough finance left, whatever, we can put an overhead door there to put the little truck back in there. Oh. Oh, there'll be room in that back corner. But oh. it eliminate one plow being stored. Which we'll figure out something. I was gonna say that's still a better scenario. Yeah. yeah. Well, have you decided what you're gonna side it with? Pine, or er, hemlock. What we have there. Yeah, yeah he cut we'll a bunch of boards. He cut a bunch of boards yeah. out. Yeah. We'll see what we got. We saved some of it, not much. That's pretty well split. And hmm. I, I say, well. Joe Parker is taking the lead on construction. He's very, doing really very good. With Good. So that's a good thing. Cool. Yeah. And I'm going to save that last bit for my supplements concerns. I'm all done. Okay. Well, um, I'll just add here that we did receive our reimbursement for paving with 32000 that you signed off. For the South, South Creek, Creek Road? Road. Yeah. Uh, might as well bring it up now just as good as any because we're getting towards spring. Uh, our with fuel kind of stabilizing, are we thinking that we should talk about the rest of the creek road like we talked about in the springtime, or is that kind of off the table now? What do you mean, rest of the creek? Well, we had talked about doing some of North Creek Road 
this spring with the money that was left over before the fiscal year ended. Right. From the, the box culvert up through. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. To Alfresia. Yeah. Actually, there's a break just north of Alfresia Road. Are we still potentially looking at getting bids on that and maybe doing it? That's where he, Tom will give us just a pretty close idea to give us a figure within the ballpark, and then we'll put it out for bid. Okay. Yep. I just want, I mean, if it's ungodly, we won't go no farther with it, but the figure. If uh, no one has any issues, can we get down to the rec committee appointment so that we... Just, just a minute, Mr. Chairman. Cass, just one little thing. You probably already know about it. On Adams Bridge, there's that pothole right in the right hand. I know there's not much you can do this time of year. But. We Oh, that was another thing I want to put in my road commissioner report. We pothole with coal patch today, two and a half ton oh. on Cold River. Cold River Road. Just saw alone. It. Yeah. And coming back down after we emptied the truck at two and a half ton, shoveled it off. <laughs> I mean, Baker did most of it. I yeah. drove it, but I did some. <coughs> I told Baker, I said, crap, I wanted to save three shovelfuls for that bridge. It's a shallow hole. Yeah. It looks deeper than it is, and it won't stay. We've done it twice now. Yeah, that's. I know you've worked on it, too. But it's back. Okay, that's all I got there. All right, does anybody have a, an issue with us jumping down to the rec committee appointment? Real quick, so this young lady Sorry. doesn't have to sit here half the night. Go ahead. I'm fine. I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's important for me to understand what's going on. Well, let, let's uh, let's get it over with as far as I'm concerned. Did you guys talk with Matt? Um, so Matt called me earlier. Um, he was unable to attend tonight, but he's happy to have another member on the rec committee. Ah, good. Perfect. All right, then I entertain a motion. Never asked me. <laughs> I figured you would communicate with the chair, or he would never, communicate. You with never you asked me. Apparently, apparently you don't <laughs> rate. You're just, you're, you don't rate <laughs> quite high enough. It must be. I'm really feeling hurt. <laughs> I do have a question about the appointment. Would it be from now till March, and then we reappoint her, like all the other members, or one year terms? They're all one. one yeah. So term. technically, we have to re-up in after March, whatever that is, sixth. <laughs> Basically, you got two weeks, which I doubt they're probably gonna have. They're probably not gonna have a meeting between now and then, anyway. Is my guess, but I mean, it's not a big deal. I was yeah. just confirming. Yeah. I will make a motion. Except uh, your name was Sarah Coom. Sarah Coom. On the left. I'll second it. All right. Is there any issues? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? There. Now. You who seconded it? I seconded it. Condolences there, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Careful, don't scare we may, yeah. we may have a meeting at the Sugar House. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. Approval of select board warrants. There's floating and drifting. I'll take them when somebody wants to pass them this way. Okay. Huh? I have a question on that special meeting. What if you warrant it and you don't have a quorum? Can you not have that meeting at all? Well, that's a good question. Well, no, the the meeting is not to open the bids. Okay. The, the The warning is just in case you get three select board members, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was the intent. For the open meeting law. For, yeah, to make sure we're in compliance with the open meeting law. Yeah. Yeah, but now. But I don't think if you warn it and three don't show, I don't think you're obligated. You're not taking any action yeah. anyway. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's no That's decision. It. So, so knows there's no decision. So I think no matter what, I think they're safe to open. I just thought of that. It's, it's a valid. It's a valid statement. It's a valid. Art's gonna be here. Mike's gonna be here. Myself's gonna be here. Bob can't make it. No, I can't make it. Robert, Robert he can't. And make I can't. It. I'm in. I'm in Montpelier. Yeah. Now you know. If I, I remember, I like he's gonna. Question comes up right now about that open meeting line. Maybe Gloria can help us. Well, what is the status on this thing they've done in Montpelier about? Canceling the open meeting law until the first of July of 2024 that I read in the paper the other day. Well, for town, town meetings, got I got the email to as moderator that yeah. that everything got bumped another year or whatever. 
so for the the COVID rules or whatever, yeah. which doesn't affect us because we're still do, we're most, we're most, okay. most people are back to normal, so yeah, we're okay. we're back as, to as normal. As I read the article, I kind of took and, it that it covered everything. Extend until your next town meeting. Correct. So yeah. it doesn't it doesn't do anything for us. We're okay. we're, we're we are where we are. So okay. it doesn't do anything for us. Okay. All right. Approval of the select board warrants. They're floating and drifting. I think Robbie has them now. Yeah, I've got them. Um, guest, we just took care of. Anybody else want to be considered as a guest? <coughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound good. Old business. Colonial life insurance. Um, so. I believe they were on the agenda last meeting, and you guys had asked me to get feedback from the employees about whether they want to pursue it further. Um, a few of them did, but they wanted pricing, so I went ahead and got pricing for them so they could compare. And then I just heard back today that neither of the ones that were interested are interested. So, so I make a motion we put it to bed. Second, second uh, seconded by Bob. He beat you. Right. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Spafford Cemetery tree removal. Kevin. Yes, sir. Kevin. Well. Uh, Keep it, keep it short. <laughs> I'd like to actually step in and authorize Mr. Peck to hire whatever company he sees fit at this point to get the tree removed. I'll second that. Okay, that's it. Um, no, he got back to me. And he's going to rehire one of his. In fact, the guy he's going to rehire is the guy I contacted to get his phone number. He's going to have him on board to help out. Expects to get the tree down this spring, so. So Greg did call you, by him. Well, he called. Yeah, you know, he did. He, he said to so. I've been trying to get a hold of you. I would let sit there like that. Yeah. And, so, uh, GM Tree Tech will be taking down the tree. He told me that he has one of his former climbers is going to come help him out. And uh, in fact, I talked to the former climber. I said, "You better get in there, and take a look at that tree now. You got baby due in May." We'll take a look at that tree because you know you may not want to tackle it after May. Yeah, that's a biggie. Yeah. So that's where we're at. And if the board's willing to wait till see what happens in the spring, hopefully by April, you know he's looking to be able to get at it. All right. Well, uh, <coughs> as far as I'm concerned, gotta <coughs> put it on your back, not the tree. The tree remo removal. And I think there's a narrow, narrow alleyway. We can just drop it that way. And oh boy! <laughs> this guy have a crane. Push. Climb it down. They climb, yeah, climb it. it. Yep. Climb climb it. it. Rope it down. Oh my God! So when they, when I was talking to him, that's why I said this. You better go up and take a look at that. That thing maintains its girth all the way up through for a yeah. long ways. That's bigger than any That's pole a sight to climb. see, though, to watch those guys do yeah. that. They can do amazing things. It is. Step up the house sometime, Marto. Let you borrow my tools. That was easy. <laughs> I, <laughs> don't, I don't climb trees. I like both <laughs> feet on the ground. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anything yeah. else? No. Oh. Yep. All right. Stafford Cemetery. Yes, Bafford Cemetery, Gene Stone. Um, after we looked in our minutes, past minutes, history of it, and then after we contacted Bill Bloomer, so you guys got all copies of all those letters and stuff. Uh, quite honestly, I think as far as the town was concerned back then, even under legal advice, we we're done with this. So, if he wants to go any further with it, then it's up to him. That's a motion on that, Mr. Chairman. Well, so I, I like mean, an opinion. At this point, are we saying that if? So, I, I my memory was racked about. I think it was about the time that I came in. When you were wrapping things up in 2012, yeah, well, we're and that's going some then, of those yeah. meetings that are there. I think that that was about the time I started. I yeah. did remember when I read the email that jogged my memory to a few years ago what happened. Yeah. But 
Um, and I remembered the road issue and the, that the road got obstructed and we had to basically yep. step up and say that the road couldn't be obstructed and all that. Right. So, but what I've, I guess, never fully understood, and maybe this is where the two of you come in because you're the only two that were here. <laughs> the graves got put on the outside of the fence with the intention that that was going to, at some point, my based on my understanding, that was going to be extended to town, to be a part of the town cemetery. Like, basically, there was going to be an agreement with that landowner that was here yeah. a few weeks ago. Yes. And that was going to be added to the town cemetery kind of as a family plot, that his family was going to be allowed to be buried in that section. Is that well, my understanding? Well, it was going to go from east to west, from the east line to the west line. Of the cemetery, the full width. Because you look up there, he mm -hmm. even set the that big post there. Right. Yeah. Uh, he was going to move the fence back already. Yeah. But uh, then what happened, what I saw, is things would come together. And yeah, if you're going to do this, six months later, all of a sudden, the gentleman would be back in. No, we didn't want to do it that way. We are going to do something else. And, so and then money got involved. And then money got involved where he come in. And th this is where it came to a head, that uh, he swore that we said that we would pay for his subdivision of his property, which was never said. No. Oh. Okay. Never said. So the request, at that point, there was a desire that the town was going to foot the bill for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what he wanted. So we then... We were only footing the bill for the en engineering or surveying of... The one piece up by the stone wall. Right. That was it. Right, right away or something. Basically the section right. that was going to become part of the town cemetery? Correct. Correct. Well, Which those, wasn't very much. It was only those, probably going to be... Those graves were put in there, uh, and this is going really way back, uh, by accident because the people who were in charge of the Spafford Cemetery at the time thought that was their property. That was the cemetery property. Where are those graves on the out? I thought where the graves are on the outside of the fence? Yes. So. Originally. Mike Spafford could tell you. His okay. relatives. Okay. A and um, then when all of this started, the tree started shaking, not to use that analogy, uh, then all of a sudden it was discovered that those two graves were on the outside of the, the old fence. Yeah. But he had some, the property owner had some people buried over on the other side of the fence too. You, those graves, you know. Right. So, and this all took place prior to the current property owning, owner owning it? No, uh, I don't know no. that part of it. He would. He was still there. Oh, he, at that he, point? I believe, was the owner but when them graves were made. Were dug because one of them, if you recall, was the gentleman that uh, got run over by the truck in his yard. Yeah. The other one, I don't know who. That's a relative. Yeah. Of yeah. yeah family. Family. Both, both graves are less than twenty years old. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what yeah. I thought, too. Yeah. Well, the, mm -hmm. It was 74 when the Spafford family deeded the cemetery to the town. Okay. July of 74. <coughs> and then he had he had all the property around it. But it's, it's only been, it's been less than 20 years, 20, 22 years. So, so do, we, do we have a right-of-way? We have a right-of-way. Yeah. Right. Down through. Which is deeded. We, we, My understanding yeah. is the right-of-way is deeded. <laughs> we have it's a on there. right away. <coughs> And we have a fenced-in cemetery. So, story. but how this all got started was he figured that because those two graves were on the outside, he could get the town to pay for. He wanted to subdivide his properties, right? So that he could s sell his properties off, and he wanted the town to have to pay for all of that subdivision uh, and survey and all this stuff. And then when towards the end. And it's covered in the minutes and stuff that you read. Mm -hmm. Towards the end, we said, no, we would just pay for the survey where we were going to move the driveway over closer to the wall. 
and take over that section where those two graves are. But then all of a sudden after after that, he put in two two or three more graves. I don't know. Uh, there's only two there, right? There's only I thought two. There's only, there's only, there's only no, two where, on the outside where his, of the... where his family is on that side. He, wa he wants to have more grave, more family in there. Yeah. Sometime in the future. But then what he did was he dug those big holes and put all that metal and all that crap in those yeah. big holes. I, I took over to, uh, Bob uh, March of 21, uh, two years ago. That was just when they, he had the, uh, the obstacle course up through the... Yeah. Uh, up through the right of way. And they, you know, I guess the town made a move. Piles of dirt all the way. They cleared like, Right. Yeah, because the when that was going on, wasn't there some communication about the desire that basically wanted all the trees taken out and the and the right away to be on, essentially on the stone wall or something? They wanted the right away a little closer to the church property. Yeah, tr and trim it up. He something was, like yeah. that. He was going to put the new driveway in if the town put the material to him. That's what right. He was doing. So, if if we do new driveway, we're putting our own material. That's right. We're doing our own excavating. That's right. If it comes to that. So I guess is the debate then over the two graves that exist outside? Then is that where the debate really lies, or are that's they? That's where that's where he thinks he has the town. That was his. So, this, am I just totally crazy for for and? and maybe it's an off-the-wall suggestion, and I don't know what the plot situation is in the cemetery, but do you remove the leverage and you put the two graves inside the cemetery and there's no more leverage? You ex it would be, ex you ex it would be cheaper than what he's asking. That's right. Yeah. You exhume the graves and you put them into the cemetery. Move but the that's fence his down. property, isn't it? You move, move the fence down, that means we've got to buy his property. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> exhume the graves and move the graves into the cemetery into two plots in the cemetery done deal case closed then i got a shovel to, you got a shovel no but to i mean put the original but the, le back. the leverage the leverage is the leverage is no longer in existence so at that I, point in that case you're setting preference here where on my place on your farm my farm i can actually start do bear family burial then come to the town and say you got to take the it over. well the where you'd have to go back and look at is were those graves authorized as town burials and there's those kind of situation all over town right now no 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 you're not following me were okay. those graves authorized as town cemetery burials you, you follow me did the town it does screw it, it does it did the town screw up exactly that's the question did the town authorize them as town cemetery burials if they're town cemetery burials, they're technically town property. I don't believe... The You'd have to do some digging ever, to find out. do a lot of research. But I don't believe anything ever came to the town. And if it's I believe at that point, and you mentioned Mike Spafford, I think his father, Hugh, Hugh. was in charge of that at the time. Because the, uh, the, the flip side of that is where you went with it. The flip side of that is it's a private burial and it's none of our business and none of our problem. But but you want to make sure that the town didn't screw up in the process. That's where I'm going with it. And this is long before any of us. I mean, this is going back a long way. Well, I think that would be probably easy enough. Gloria, Gloria could probably find it on the death certificate, I believe. Don't it list where people are buried? No. Uh, the, the final resting place or whatever it does. Yeah. So it probably is if it says private, if it's, yeah, right? Okay. Or would it say, or would it say town? Do they say town cemetery or? Some of them say Clarendon, East Clarendon would say what, yeah. what the location is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I mean that's that's why I'm saying if if and I'm saying if I'm not I'm not here to say we did, but I'm saying if there was a screw up on our side, and that they are and they are listed as town cemetery burials. Logical solution is the town's got to remedy the problem and put them into a town cemetery. Kevin, and then me, it's solved. Let me, let me let me ask you: where the old fence was, there's still a piece of that there. 
that's where if you're looking at the cemetery you're going up the driveway right. on the left hand side there's a pulse right yeah all right and then there was that's where the two there's two graves there that he claimed that were on his property on the right side there's two graves or three graves now that his family on the right hand side is, those are the ones I was referring to I don't know if there's I didn't know any on the left hand side on the right there's two that one was a friend of his and one was a family member of his mm -hmm. wife or or something. So the one on the left you're talking about? I didn't know there was one on the left. There was one on the left. But there's, but where the old fence was, just behind that, that's what he's, he was originally saying, that those two graves uh, were put there, and that wasn't the cemetery property. That was I'll, his I'll property. I'll look to take a look from tomorrow. I'm so now. here's another thing. It might be time to have also, and again, not to make this any bigger of an issue than it already is, but it might be appropriate to have a conversation with Hugh Spafford and say, get his take on it and get it documented and get him on record as to what the understanding is of, of his understanding. Because, I mean, it is the Spafford Cemetery. Yeah. So, I... He's, where's he now? In Rutland. Still in Rutland, I think. He's got a camp up in Shrewsbury up above the couple of bridge we're talking about. Oh, okay. I just saw him last week. For the first time in a long time. But, you know, Can and we again. contact him? They have, they have a plot in Evergreen Cemetery and Calvary Cemetery in Rutland. I mean, they're not. They're not planning to be buried no, here. No, I mean, the Spaffords got the corner. But when I look at the deed, the Hughes name's not on it. The people, there's three Spaffords, I believe, they're signing it. I don't. I don't believe I saw Hughes on it. One of them. Uh, I mean, my just my thought is, right. I just want to make sure because if something needs to be resolved once and for all, it's better now to do it than when the landowner is gone, <coughs> like like he suggested when he was here a few weeks ago. You don't want to inherit. A firestorm after the fact when he's gone yeah, and, and find and blocks. find out that oh the town you know and find out then oh the town screwed up yeah and then we got a bigger problem on our hands and again i'm gonna say it over and over again i'm not saying that we did i'm saying let's just do our homework and make sure we didn't yeah. because yeah that's that's the important thing well like, like i said i believe on the certificate it should show where they were buried you know mo most of them do uh, well, that was a priority. None, you know, the town's estate doesn't require all of that so much, especially if it's cremate, cremation, mm -hmm. because you can take your cremates and scatter it off Killington and Lake Echo and take it to oh, yeah, Maine and throw sure. out there. So if it's a body, then it's required. If it's a full burial, body, casket. But if it's cremation, once the body's cremated, they consider it the final disp disp disposition at the crematorium. And if you want to put down where they're at, fine. If you don't want to put down where they're at, because the final disposition was at the crematorium. My understanding mm -hmm. of this, when it all started, was that, <clears throat> like I said, looking up at the cemetery, there was two graves that he claimed were on <coughs> his property. Who put those graves there? I have no idea. But well, when, well, but on the, the right hand side, did the town side, put them there? That's where, or did he put them there? That's where his relatives that's where the, are. That's where the and rubber meets the road. When they yeah. plant, when he put those, <coughs> he allowed to have those people buried there. Right. One was a friend, a male veteran. Yeah. The other one was a mother alive. Yeah. So those sound to me like they're private burials on a private property, but we better do our homework and make sure that that's right. legit. Yeah. Make yeah. sure that I'll that's what up, it is. I'll go up this week and take a look if there is, too. Give me a call. Remember the gentleman was also here, you know, complaining about people being buried in the cemetery that weren't supposed to be there. And so I don't know exactly what... Well, but the, but the flip side of that is people being buried in the cemetery is none of his concern because it's right. a town cemetery now. So he can't come in and say, oh, oh yeah. well, you've got people in the cemetery that aren't supposed to be in the cemetery. That, that's, it's town cemetery. We'll, we'll go up. I'll give you a call, and uh, uh, we'll go up and take a look. Just 
make sure. Yeah, I don't think there's any on the left, but we'll go but, and check. Uh, you know, I, I think it's long overdue, considering you guys have been dealing with this since 2004. Five, four? Six, somewhere in there. I thought it was four. You've been dealing with this since I was in high school. How's that? <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> You've been dealing with it since I was in high school. Yeah, yeah but you're still oh, yeah. wet behind the ears. <laughs> well, not as young as I used to be. But I mean, no, I mean that's how that's how long you've been dealing with it. Yeah. Getting schooled now, Bob. Guess so. <laughs> All right. So what's that horse dead? Give me a call. Yep. Move on. Yeah. Rec committee appointment again. <laughs> AARP Community Challenge Grant. Um, I forwarded you an email about this. Um, it only caught my eye because there was a speed feedback sign that you could apply for yep. with no local match. Um, I tried to look at the grant application and I would have to make an account and log in and stuff, so I didn't do that. But Make a motion that we authorize Katie to attempt to apply for a speed back sign grant through the community challenge grant. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Um, any idea on how it would benefit anyone 50 years or older? Suggestions? What's this? If we can, if we could use it at my house, we can check how fast the slap shots are for hockey. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody over 50 that wants to try it out. Are we talking about age and population or? Yes. If we put it up next to the, uh, if we put it up next to M Molten Avenue, the seniors still meet at the, uh, no. they don't meet there no. anymore? Oh, you knew where I was going with it. <laughs> no, that one out with the COVID. Yeah. The, uh, that's about the Franklin's. So I know that's one of the questions, so. We can put it in front of Bob's house. He's kind of a senior. <laughs> yeah. well, do we have census data of the average age of Clarendon residents? Did they did they give us anything like that with the census? So what about school then? Yeah. That's what I was just thinking. Is it yeah, but they want... It, it's supposed to be geared towards why it benefits It's people. from the AARP. Yeah, so how are you going to benefit? But, the, but there's people walking their dogs that are seniors all up and down that road. <laughs> Molten Ave or Middle Road? Huh? Molten you be Ave careful. or Middle Road? Both. Yeah. Both be careful. And yeah, because they're going to ask you to prove it. I right? walk down Molten Ave all the time. <laughs> I was going to say, and then there's young, blonde-headed people. <laughs> hmm. There's got to be... I know, that's, uh, that's one of my thoughts. There's got to be a tie-in. I mean, just got to dream it up. Okay. <laughs> Everybody put their thinking caps on. Email Katie with well, your thoughts. That probably comes out of there, and they're aging. <laughs> I bet Matt's going to be happy you said that. Thank you. There's got to be. Not the only people who patronize the post office are seniors. There's got to be a way to. Back park in the middle of the road. <laughs> I'm sure there's got to be a way. Um, I think you need to approve the motion. I think I interrupted after a second. You did interrupt it. Yep. <laughs> okay, there was a motion made and seconded. Uh, we've had some. Long discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It's the one thing if we had a community center, a senior center, or something yeah, like I know. that, yeah. that would be that would be perfect. But very purchasing policy, Katie. So, um, I sent you the Wallingford's policy, Rutland Town's policy, and then DLCP's model policy. And then just today, I sent you ours. It didn't even cross my mind when I was doing this to send that one, which has been very helpful. I think... This can't be the current one, because I remember approving one since I've been on the board. This I, is an old one. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. find anything. I know we did one while either Heather or Janet was here. And we upgraded. Yes, we did. Yeah. I know we did. Yes. Yep. And There's, This it, is definitely an old one. And if it was Janet, now I understand why you couldn't find it. Well... That's weird to me because the last two times that the auditors have been here, it says it needed to be updated. And the first time auditors came was not that long after Heather, right? Boy, like, but I, re I remember doing one. Yes. Yes, we've done it. Do you, do you have any copies in your drawers? <laughs> I can dig through I my wonder. email, maybe. I mean... 
I'd love to work off of something, and maybe it hasn't changed much, like, or doesn't need a ton of changes. Gmail search is a wonderful thing. Give me a minute. It is uh, rather Katie. older. Katie, Bob Sarsky. Come down here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking at that. I might have Dave, something in Dave here. Potter's signature on it. Yeah, Art Knox, Norm Bowen. Yeah, they were. They just approved, uh, signed that they received it. But if you look at the actual purchasing, uh, Dave Potter is the one that signed that. Yeah. The actual policy. And Robert Savasky, Nancy Buffum. Yeah. Mm. If Boy, well, I remember same, doing one. If we're reading the same thing. Uh, it's got a date of November eighth. I will have to when I'm on my laptop tomorrow. I'm gonna have to see what I can find. Yeah. But we've done something. I agree with you, Robert. We've done something since you've been here. I know. That's what I, I said. First year I got on board. I, know I was going to say, you might have even been here for it. Well, then I don't know why it's so ancient and needs to be updated. I. That's the rumble I had heard in the office, and that's why we were going to work on it. Either way, I make a motion that we <laughs> table this for tonight, and we do some more research before our next meeting. Okay. I'll, I'll second that. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? I've got to look through this desk. Mike can go through his files. Yeah. You know who would find it if he was still on the board? You remember who used to be able to go home and find anything because the man had any piece of paper? Art Knox. Art Knox had yeah. every piece of paper that he had ever, ever. done. Yeah. He could go and he could find it and he'd bring it into the next meeting. God rest his soul, but man, he yeah. could do that. Uh, all right, Katie, do you have a report for us? Um, I had also forwarded an email, and Heidi <coughs> had replied back as well about an energy resilience survey to fill out um, through our PC. Uh, I think there's like, what is there, forty-five million that will soon be available from the state of Vermont for possible upgrades. Um, Matt filled one out for the fire department, and I was going to fill out one for here and the town garage. Um, so kind of just a heads up for that. So is this connected to the um, Efficiency Vermont money that's coming down through the whatever the latest round of that COVID money was called? This, she said, is a new state program, Municipal Energy Resilience Program. It's got to be part of the ARPA or the... Um, what's the name of the other bill? We just had Efficiency Vermont at our mil our building do a look through because there's a whole ton of money that's becoming available that they're going to be doing all kinds of efficiency stuff. And it the, the Efficiency Vermont doesn't even know if they're going to be in charge of distributing it yet. It's that far up the chain still. Right, and this uh, survey seemed pretty like basic. Um, so... I guess just letting you know I'm going to yeah. fill it out. Which I'd, go, okay. I'd go ahead and make a motion that you fill one out for the um, town hall, the town garage, and if Matt hasn't, I would highly recommend to the community center board that they fill one out for the community center. Um, and then it does ask if you're filling out for multiple buildings what the priority is. Town garage. Hmm? Town garage. Oh. Well, no, they're talking about what's your mo highest priority in each building. No, no, right? need-wise, I think. I know, but I'm saying for each building, you have to list what the need is? No, so if you were submitting multiple forms, would you rank this building as first, second, or third priority for oh. consideration? That's a good way to start a feud in town. Oh, oh God. I understand that not all listed buildings will town have Town garage <laughs> would be at the top of the list. I'd say town garage would be first, this would be second, and community center probably third. Especially seeing how they're doing an addition. Yeah. I mean, as far as efficiency goes, <laughs> you've seen the meme on Facebook where the kid's throwing the money out the window. <laughs> That's what's happening down there um, every time the furnace runs. <laughs> are any of those, like, is this building located in a floodplain or river corner? No. Down below isn't either? No. no. Um, and then is this considered on the federal or state historic register? No, you never no. did it, did you? No. You never put this on the state or no. historic. No. No, because don't if we did. <laughs> okay, 
and then um, one I'm not sure of or how I'm going to find out, but square footage for both. You got your tape measure and do your math. Yeah. 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 You took geometry. It's As about. Oh, yeah. Do they have Perfect. Perfect. It's okay. Okay. Make her work for I, it. No, Robert. Make I, her work for I it. I considered so, that. So Gloria, <laughs> I thought it an easier way. Gloria, it sounds like you made a new okay, friend. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow we'll take the tape off. So he's going to take her with us. Yeah. Got a tape measure right in here. Uh, we'll, we'll get the 100 foot. There, should, the there, act, there actually so. should be. <laughs> there actually <laughs> should be. Uh, Lister card? Lister card that shows the size of the... That's what I'm thinking, right? Yeah. yeah. Or it's on your insurance policy, usually. Yeah. Because it has to be... You have to list your yeah. square footage for insurance purposes. Yep. Okay, so I'll um, do that this week. That's give the Lister something to do. They don't do anything. I know. Kevin doesn't here. do anything. I, I can give them the link to it all. He's, no, he's nobody, though. <laughs> Nobody. Aren't you glad you came? <laughs> you're, really, you're really getting beat up tonight. Was there a motion or no for that? It, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I made a motion that we've been motion all month. I made a motion to fill out the two and encourage the community center to fill out one. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's no about a motion, but there's a movement over here. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay, I'll Art, second it. Art second it. Um, we've had a lengthy discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Oh, good. <sighs> Gloria, do you have anything that you... Well, we have an election coming up on March 7th. Okay, I see I got my secret mail. Yeah, there you go. Okay. 10 to 7 for voting. We have the informational meeting the night before at the community center. 7 o'clock. Everybody's welcome. And you can ask for absentee ballots anytime. So upstairs community center yes. is where we are this year? Yep. Are your ballots in yet? I got half of them. I can't mail them out till they're due Wednesday. But they can request any time. Yeah. So Wednesday I can mail them out. So after Wednesday somebody can come in and vote if they wanted to? Yes, they could. Katie, do you have anything else? All right. Do you have any concerns? Yeah. First off, congratulations, welcome board. Yeah. Congratulations, <laughs> committee. Um, just to bring it up, because we are not posting the dirt roads or our tire roads, that I have hopefully the heavy equipment, trucks or whatever, will have respect for our roads. And if there's any questions, to call me and we'll figure something out or whatever. Bob, do you have anything? No, I'm all set. I'm good. I'm all set for tonight. All right. I'm good. So okay. moved. Mr. Chairman, before you do that, should we go back and do the minutes? We get a full board now? Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, we do. Oh, jeez. I'll table them to the next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. You, you just to, didn't approve them? That's right. I'll make a motion that we approve the me meeting minutes of January 23rd. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. I'm still right. upstanding. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not one here. I'm out too. I wasn't here. Uh, all right, aye. So three of us. Now I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed?